you know, something I think that you really pointed to in that uh, essay is that all of these things that he's talking about are already happening in some capacity in Brazil. Um, and when I, I read this article that came up uh, yesterday, it was in The Guardian, and it was about how uh, JB, I guess we could say his name, JB, mm-hmm. his attitude towards indigenous people and the lands of the indigenous populations in Brazil, he has no respect for that and wants to completely hand that over to uh, agribusiness um, yeah. and my, you know, whatever other operates, mining, logging, all of that. Um, but that seems to already be happening anyway. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'll just ask you to please comment on what the current state of things are in Brazil and what this uh, this individual who's elected, what his real attitude or, or behavior is going to be like when he's in power. Oh, we really don't know. This is the uncertainty is widespread and people are really anxious. I think there's even an article now about like how these elections affected mental health in Brazil. People are really stressed out. I gotta say, I, I, the day I was a bit numbed out, I, I cried, my friends cried, we were afraid of getting out of the streets. There was already a physical attack the day of the elections here in the city where I live against a woman who was knocked out by the um, military police. So there's a lot of anxiety about physical violence on the streets. Um, I, I'm sensitive. I hope I don't end up crying at some point in our conversation. But yesterday I was at the, a conference, uh, uh, like a round table discussion with Sonia Guajajara. She was the vice presidential candidate together with Bolos for the most progressive party we have here, PSOL. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. They are very progressive. I mean, of course, it's a political party, so as political, uh, as progressive a uh, political party can get, I guess. Bolos talked about occupations. He talked about how a lot, repeatedly about how there are more empty houses than homeless people, and he wanted to combat that. Sonia Guajajara is this indigenous woman, very powerful, very articulate, funny, like, People in my circles, I mean, if we want someone in power, it's someone like her, you know. And yesterday she was really funny because she, she would said exactly this. Like for the first time ever, we we're actually terrified a politician might actually follow through with their promise. This is, at this point, we're just like kind of hoping he's just, even people who voted for the man, for this elected man, actually said that they don't think he really thinks all the stuff he says. He just says da boca pra fora, they say. They just like kind of blowing up smoke, right? It's an mm-hmm. expression. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. he, all the homophobia he says, ah, he's just because he's just saying it. He doesn't mean it. He's an old fashioned man from the 1950s. <laughs> it's like really people are talking about, you know, walking backwards in time with pride, you know, like walking backwards literally. But. Will he actually follow through with this? I mean, it would be easy for him to just not grant any more land for indigenous peoples. And what she said yesterday, along with like a table of really amazing uh, indigenous and Quilombo leaders, was every election is a fight for them. Like Every election is a new set of problems and a new set of fights. They've always endured fascism. This is not the first time uh, fascism didn't you know, come to be now. So they deal with fascism always for decades, for centuries, actually, literally for centuries. They talk about uh, their struggle for 500 years. So now that we on the left kind of woke up to the fact that, yes, now we can't ignore the fact that it is fascism. And in this sense, it's good because now we have a whole new group of people that can join the resistance. People who are a bit like less radical or less uh, engaged in militant work, there's a big wave of people who are just joining hardcore resistance movements. So this is a good thing. But on the other hand, what is he actually going to do? He wants to, okay, so he's a, we're already not really granting land to indigenous and Quilombo people. I'm not sure. Do you know what Quilombo? Should I explain? Yeah, Quilombo? I would actually wanted to ask that question. I, I had a just glance at what that was, but I would love if you could explain um, who these people are. Yeah. Yeah. So we have indigenous communities and we have laws that protect their right to land. 
And then we have Quilombo people who are basically the same, but of the African diaspora. So they are the uh, formerly, the enslaved people from the beginning of colonization that ran away. They used to run away from the, the farms and form these communities, these resistance communities. And they're very powerful. And they interact with indigenous peoples because when these uh, Africans, these enslaved Africans ran away, they would meet up with indigenous peoples and they would come together and form communities and they would exchange a lot. So there was a little bit of a cultural exchange there. And it's a very unique, uh, it's very unique to Brazil, this interaction and the way it happened in resistance against the Christian, colonial, white European thing. So we talk a lot about in connection, the two things, because now they talk a lot about how uni to unite the forces. Yesterday at the stable, there were leaders from Colombos as well, and they talk about uniting forces politically and spiritually, because they have their own spiritual practices that complement each other. And they, they also fight for land, uh, you know, for having the right to land because they have a lot of spiritual practices that depend on rivers, that depend on nature, that depend on the land, the ancestral lands. And agribusiness, for example, kills all of that. These communities are being put in a corner and they're granted, maybe, maybe they're granted an inch of land and then everything around is so fucked up that their land is impossible to live on. For example, a river, you have a, a little piece of river, but the river is being polluted up there. So the whole river is messed up and then kids can't even swim there anymore. So we have indigenous and Columbus people paying for crimes they didn't commit for years and years uh, after the crime is committed, you know.